the Pay Palm Treaty. The chiefs retained Métis interpreters Joseph and August Nolin to document the 1873 negotiations. Their notes were given to Chief Powassin, who, in 1906, gave them to his friend, photographer Carl Gustav Lindy. He subsequently sold the document to Chief Paypalm. This document is now known as the Paypalm Treaty. The text of the Paypalm Treaty is thought to more closely resemble the actual terms verbally agreed to in October 1873, while the text of Treaty 3, that is recognized by the Government of Canada, is closer to the 1872 draft. Because of this, there is a belief that the recognized official text of Treaty No. 3 doesn't represent the actual spirit of the agreement made in 1873. The Paypalm Treaty. Full text. The following are the terms of the treaty held at Northwest Angle the third day of October, 1873. 1. The government will give when Indians will be settled. Two hoes, one plow for every ten families, five harrows for every twenty families, one yoke of oxen, one bull and four cows for every band, one scythe and one axe for every family, and enough of wheat, barley, and oats for the land broken up. This is to encourage them at the beginning of their labor once for all. Two, fifteen hundred dollars every year in twine and munitions. Three, twelve dollars for the first payment to every head of Indians and every subsequent year, five dollars. Twenty-five dollars to every chief every year. Counselor, first soldier, and messenger, fifteen dollars. The farming implements will be provided for during this winter to be given next year to those that are farming and to those who are anxious to imitate the farmers, a set of carpenter tools will also be given. Seven. Coats will be given to the chiefs and their headmen every three years. With regard to other Indians, there is goods here to be given to them. 8. If their children that are scattered come inside of two years and settle with you, they will have the same privilege as you have. 9. I will recommend to the authorities at Ottawa, assisted by the Indian Commissioner, the half-breeds that are living with you to have the same privilege as you have. 10. The English government never calls the Indians to assist them in their battles, but he expects you to live in peace with red and white people. 11. Mr. Dawson said he would act as by the past about the Indians' passage in his road. The Indians will be free as by the past for their hunting and rice harvest. 12. If some gold or silver mines be found in their reserves, it will be to the benefit of the Indians. But if the Indians find any gold or silver mines out of their reserves, they will surely be paid the finding of the mines. 13. The commissioner and an agent will come to an understanding with the Indians about the reserve and shall be surveyed by the government. The commissioners don't wish that the Indians leave their harvest immediately to step into their reserve. 14. About the Indian commissioner. The commission is pending upon the authorities at Ottawa. I will write to Ottawa and refer Mr. Charles Nolin. 15. There will be no sale of liquor in this part of Canadian territory. It is the greatest pleasure for me to hear you and when we shake hands, it must be forever. It will be the duty of the English government to deal with the commissioners if they act wrong towards the Indians. I will give you a copy of the agreement now, and when I reach my residence, I will send you a copy in parchment. 16. You will get rations during the time of the payment every year. 17. The Queen will have her policemen to preserve order, and whenever there is crime and murder, the guilty must be punished. 18. The treaty will last as long as the sun will shine and water runs, that is to say, forever. Elder Paypalm explains how he obtained the document as follows. Lindy was a photographer and a friend to the Indian people. One day, about 40 or 50 years ago, he told me he had a paper and the government wanted to buy it from him. He said they would give him $5,000 for it, but he wanted me to have it. For your children, he said. That winter I saved all the money from my trap line. My family had a very hard winter that year because I saved that money, but my wife never complained. She was a great woman, and she understood that the paper had on it the promises made to the people by the government, and they were breaking those promises. I saved my money, and in the spring I gave it to Lindy. He moved south, but he sent me the parcel in the mail. He sent it like a parcel of clothes, so nobody would suspect it was the treaty. The notation below appears in pencil on the back of the original. This copy was given to me in 1906 by Chief Powassan at the Northwest Angle Lake of the Woods. Signed, C. G. Lindy.